Welcome to day two of the media fun here at Super Bowl 46. I'm Ralph Bacchiano here with our NFL columnist Gary Myers. The Giants just met the media again, including, of course, Eli Manning. And Gary, you've covered Eli Manning as long as I have, and it just seems no matter what the stage is, nothing really changes with him. It's the same focused demeanor. You know, Ralph, he, the thing that from, the, from day one that you know, we've noticed about Eli is extremely laid back. He doesn't let anything bother him. And the fact that this is his second Super Bowl, I, I think that he's just really taking everything in stride. He knows what to expect. He's not getting thrown off. Uh, he spoke to the team, as you wrote about uh, last week, just you know, get all the business stuff done last week before they got to Indianapolis, because when they get here, it's all about football. And I think that's what his approach is. What's really been interesting to me about him is most of the questions asked to him so far this week have been about Peyton. And I really thought whether Eli was elite would be the big deal, but it's no, it's, is Peyton going to play again? Well, obviously this is a very unique situation where the game is being played in, in the house that Peyton built, and when Indianapolis was awarded the Super Bowl a few years ago, you know, the conjecture was that Peyton would be the first uh, quarterback and the Colts would be the first team to play the Super Bowl on their home field. Well, he's not here in the game. He's had a, a, you know, a neck injury last season. We didn't play. The speculation is you know, whether he'll play uh, next year, whether his career is over, if he can play, whether he play with the Colts. And Eli has been inundated with Peyton questions, but you know, he's, he's maintained his calm demeanor. He hasn't lost his patience. I'm not sure I would act the same way in the same situation if I was in Super Bowl and all I was asked about was my brother, but um, a certain, certainly Peyton has become a dominant backdrop to the Super Bowl. Meanwhile, that's a fun story for us, but for Eli, he's all focused on business, as you can see. Well, uh, we haven't had practice yet, so um, I think everybody's looking forward to that. Really, nothing, nothing has changed uh, between yesterday's media day and today. Not, you know, the only thing we've done is media day so far, so I think everybody... Uh, I was looking forward to, you know, we have meetings after this, looking forward to get back into football. That, you know, that's what this is all about is playing this football game. And, uh, you know, up till now, um, that's, you know, that's the only thing we haven't done yet. So I think that's, uh, I'm excited just to run around, get back on the practice field, get with my teammates and, and uh, get the focus back to football. Okay, the other big story of Super Bowl week is one very familiar to New York fans, but he's really starting to become a national sensation, and that's the salsa dancing Victor Cruz, who still somehow is the same great, fun kid, even though everybody wants a piece of him right now. Well, you know, at Media Day on Tuesday, there was some TV station that got him after he came off the podium and asked him, to dance, and he was just dancing on camera. I mean, obviously, he's got no inhibitions about, you know, doing the salsa for a national audience now. But you're right; he he has really not changed. You'd like to think it's going to continue like that. That his success and anything that comes with it after the Super Bowl will keep him the same way. But you know, history has shown that when you know guys like him who have come out of nowhere all of a sudden, you know, have success and have all these different things thrown their way, they can't help but change. You'd like to think he's grounded and he'll be the same guy next year, but we'll have to wait and see. We're going to try later on in the week to get Victor to teach Philip Bondi how to do the salsa <laughs> right here on NYDailyNews.com. <laughs> it should be, should be pretty wild, but uh, look, Victor's going to have a lot of opportunities, and he talked a little bit about that today on how he stays grounded when everybody is starting to give opportunities and money in his direction. You know, growing up, I didn't, I didn't have anything. Nothing was given to me. I had to work for everything I've had, so... Um, you know, I just got to focus on remaining myself. And I think, uh, you know, just being around my family and staying close in it with my, with my um, you know, my support system will be huge in, in keeping me level-headed and, and grounded. Well, those are some of the big storylines for Super Bowl 46. But one other big one is that these are the two same teams from Super Bowl 42, 15 Giants who were here from that game and a few Patriots as well. There's been talk about whether this is revenge for the Patriots. I've got to think it is, at least a little bit for Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. Maybe they won't outwardly say it, but you know that has to be in their mind. You know, it's amazing. The, the Patriots were considered maybe the greatest, they would have been considered the greatest regular season team or the greatest team in NFL history if they had finished off that run four years ago and won the Super Bowl. But there's only seven players left. I mean, that's unbelievable, the turnover they've had. But like you said, Belichick is there and Brady is there. Vince Walfalk is the only defensive starter that remains uh, as a starter. This team has always been dominated by Belichick and Brady, and they are both so competitive. 
that regardless of what they say this week, you know they want to get even. If there is such a thing as getting even for what the Giants did to them four years ago, they at least want to even the score somewhat in 1-1 one, one in Super Bowls. But regardless of what happens Sunday, I don't think it will ever cover the hurt or make up for the hurt that the Patriots had four years ago when they had a chance to be 19-0. And we'll find out in four days from now whether they get a chance to erase some of that pain. And in the meantime, we got a lot more to do. Another media session, some coaches, press conferences. We're going to cover it all right here on nydailynews.com and on the blue screen. Thanks for watching, everybody.